Hello there Prehistoric Kingdom friends, today we're looking at the Dunes Dev Diary from Prehistoric Kingdom and I can't believe it is actually the end of June. So before we're jumping into this one, I thought I'd have a sneaky look at the Trello board. So here's the Trello board here, as I wanted to see what was coming up for Prehistoric Kingdom, just out of pure interest. And what I have discovered is that we are getting trading. Now this was uploaded on the 28th of June and I've not seen this before so this is completely new to me. It's coming in update 13 but again this might be changed but yeah this is really cool. This is going to be a new feature now that you can trade animals and I don't know if it's going to be trading within players or if it's just like an AI kind of thing online where there's going to be an opportunity to have these dinosaurs instead of incubating them you will be able Able to park transfer these dinosaurs so you can see here it will say the name of the dinosaur uh, the species and then it's got if it's an adult assuming that will change if we have a juvenile or a baby and then it's got park transfer and then it does say your price and also it does have a star rating so that is really interesting and uh, it also gives you a bit of a description here so it tells you who is actually been trading it and then it gives you your basic information um, if for example the age of the, the dinosaur or mammal that you are essentially going to be purchasing if it's got any mutations on it um, and that one I can't really figure out what it says it says adult then I'm not entirely sure what that word there is Ad ad adult size maybe maybe it's the size of the uh, mammal or dinosaur so that is really cool and then um, obviously you can Go ahead and adopt it. So this is uh, just it blows blows my mind because I've I've not seen this before. So I just wanted to address this straight away. That it'd be really cool if it's an online feature where in the future, if you have X amount of dinosaurs and you want to sell them, you can sell it and trade it with other players online, which is um, really exciting. So like I said, that's coming in update 13 with a, a bunch of features like we're getting vets, we're getting AI, the animal health and wellness, if there's going to be disease. Uh, we also have the deaths coming. Uh, we've got AI herding and packing, uh, socializing as well. But we're going to be focused on this update, update 12. So let's go back into the dev diary. Okay, here we are. So let's scroll down to the part that we want to read all about. Um, so we're talking about the, the thoughts and feelings of Update 11, which is now obviously out in game. So the team are very happy and excited about that. Uh, it's been one of their biggest launches and it just is fantastic. There is certain bugs within the game, such as the guest queuing system, which came back online a day before the release which is unfortunate, but I have seen that the, the guests do queue for miles upon miles, but it's not been like that much of a, an issue within the park itself. So the feedback from update 11 has been pretty positive and that they are going to be working on changing out little bugs and, and all this stuff, but some of it won't be done until update 12, but there will be patches to improve the game's flow uh, within the meantime. So what are they looking to change? So we have a list here, which is really great. So increasing the star and cash across all difficulties. I think this is a really good idea because I have been selling trees um, to make sure that I can afford to put in um, enough facilities to actually get my park up and running. So this is really important. Um, having one million pounds to start off with on the hardest difficulty is actually pretty hard and I put out a video uh, quite recently of ways to get around that but it's all about maintaining and building up your park rather than it's not lumberjack simulator um, so I think that's a really good improvement to increasing your starting funds. Adding the loading bay and staff center to new saves by default these can be moved or deleted. Now I hope this is going to be implemented into the challenge mode as well because the load and bait in the staff centre does actually cost you quite a lot of money. So if they added that along with the ticket booths and the guest spawner, that would be really helpful just because it does cost a lot of money to implement them into your park. So that's a good feature if they do add that. Increasing the human movement speed, both guests and staff arrive at their destination quicker. Yeah, again, a great feature that I think is important to add in as well. Reduce the amount of time individual guests spend in the park to improve the flow 
of ticket sales the main source of income. Yes, again, uh, this is an issue that I had. Also, what I'd like to add to this is even though you're reducing the amount of time that the individuals are staying within your park, I'd like to have the option to add ticket sales increases or decreases to my park because you don't have control over that. So you can't then decide how much money per person you're going to allow into your park. So I think right now, I think it's set at like a thousand pound to like enter the park. But I'd like to have the option to put that higher or lower depending on maybe like the season just to help you out a bit. Especially in the early games, because if you've not got that many animals, and yes, people will pay a thousand pounds, but later on in the game, when you've got like massive T-Rexes and then, you know, Argentina sources walking about, these like massive big ticket animals that are like a, a five star rating, you want to make sure that you're not just charging a thousand pound for that. You want to be able to up that sum. So hopefully that'll be implemented into the game later on as well. Reduce the construction and upkeep cost of park services, buildings, which is the animal nurseries, fossil depot, etc. Uh, again, yes, because it does cost you a lot of money to put them down and especially if you're not using them all the time. So if you're not constantly, you know, um, breeding animals or putting animals in your park, your animal nursery is just sitting there and that's just like hemorrhaging money. Um, so if they could reduce the cost of that, that'd be fantastic. Split the building category park infrastructure into park services and park logistics to make searching more convenient and better support future logistics modules. No complaints about that. That sounds like a good idea. Show the travel time delay on modules that need to be stopped, indicating how long it's actually going to take for the staff members to arrive. This is a massive game changer for me. Um, I had an issue today when I was playing in my park where there was no stock within, um, I think it was uh, the ice cream sweet tooth, saber tooth, sweet tooth, whatever it's called. And I said for the logistics person to come over and stock it up, but it was taking them forever. So it'd be really nice if there's like a, a little cool down. So it's going to tell me how long that's going to take. And also it helps you maintain your park a little bit better because if you're, you know, your loading bay or your area that's got your produce in it is like at the other end of the park, you then know to like move that closer. So that person is, you know, not taking that long to get to that specific area. So welcome change for that one. Show the staff efficiencies, indicating how many tasks they'll be able to complete before going on a break. Again, that's really good. I would like there, there to be a bit more of a staff screen where instead of just like hiring your staff, you'll be able to like see exactly when people are going to go on breaks. Because what I've noticed is when you automatically put down a cashier facility, what happens is they also employ an extra member of staff and that's purely to like cover breaks and rotation, which is really good. But I'd like to see a bit more of an overhaul of that of when people are actually going on breaks because by the time you expand on your park, you're going to have like loads of people kind of rotating between different food facilities. And I'd like to be able to like staff assign to specific food or gift shops, just so you have a little bit more control. But you know me, I like to micromanage. So there you go. I like to micromanage in games, not in real life. Add a convert to sandbox game button in the options menu, allowing players to rescue challenge games that are struggling. This is really good. If you really like your park, but you are absolutely tanking with money and there's no more trees to sell at the lumberjacks, then this is a really good option. They're also working on notifications, which is really good. And this was one of the things that I said in my live stream was that when I was uh, digging up a Spinosaurus, it was all, you know, good, good vibes to actually send the, the team out to dig it up. And then I was sitting there watching the screen because I was scared to click off of it because I wouldn't have known if there was going to be a negative event because that happens within the game. So within my game, it did happen that there was a negative event, which meant instead of sending my team out for £6,000 to go dig up the Spinosaurus, it then doubled it up to £12,000 and I never got that notification. So if I clicked off of that menu, I would have been spending way more money than to like actually bring my team back. So this is really good. This is a, a really effective way that you can send your team out shut that section off thinking that they're 
doing their thing while you go on and deal with other issues in your park. So along with those notifications, we have Park Issues screen, which is a pop-up which gives you an idea of issues that you may want to address straight away. So that could be no cashiers, no stock, maybe there's an empty feed or dirty habitat. Basically anything that would require you to set someone to go away and interact with that. Uh, hopefully this is going to be something that I can toggle on or off because if I get a notification every time there's an empty feeder, I assume that my staff are going to take care of that. But it's also just a really good indication because maybe you forgot to put the feeder down. Although that probably, I don't know if that would actually flag up, which would be quite useful if it did because you don't want to forget to put in the water pipe, for example, and then you're animals are dying of dehydration but that could be a park issue um, and it also helps players who don't understand the certain state icons to have a look and say okay well what's that icon there oh that means okay there's no stock so you can go away and, and address that so when are these changes expected so they'll be scattered across a few smaller patches rather than coming in one big update like what we had with update 11 the earliest patch will include sandbox conversion human speed buffs, small balance changes, and a bunch of fixes will be arriving in the next few days. So that's something to look forward to. The larger additions like notifications and park issues, they're trying to get them out as soon as possible, but it may take more time. So the future of update 12. So in update 12, we're getting the majestic brontosaurus along with the apatosaurus and the ankylosaurus, which is super exciting and I can't wait to have them in game. One thing about the Brontosaurus I would like to address right now is these sacks uh, on their, I'm going to say their neck, someone's probably going to be like, Gemma, that's not their neck, but I wonder if those are going to fill up with air. Uh, that would be such an amazing animation. Can you just imagine the Brontosaurus going on its hind legs with the air sacks filling up? Oh my gosh, it's going to be gorgeous. I'm um, really excited. I really hope that they've implemented that little tiny animation detail uh, within the Brontosaurus. And if they do, I will be like, yes! <laughs> it would just be so incredible. So uh, really excited and really hoping that that's going to be implemented. So arriving as an alternative genus to update 12 is the Apatosaurus. This thunder lizard is sure to wild guess with its extravagant patterns and docile spines. Our brontosaurus features a set of large, whatever that word says, spikes running down the side of its neck, with the park scientists believing that they might have been used during disputes with other herd members. That's what I was talking about. Okay, so there's spikes. There is definitely a sauropod that does have like ear sacs. Um, anyway, let me know in the comments below because you guys will know way more than me about this. So yeah, educate me, uh, leave it in the comments. Thank you. Park rating improvements. So one of our goals for update 12 is to revisit a few systems like the park ratings to see where it can be tidied up. With this proposed update for the management view, park rating will display a clear breakdown of its components and current progress towards the next goal. Okay, so this is just concept art at the moment, but let's break it down. So the overall rating of the park is shown here. You can also open it and close it. Um, management view, you can toggle between your dinosaurs. I'm assuming that's guests and that'll be your staff. And then we have got breakdown of your unique species, animal welfare, the guest star rating, which is quite impressive to be honest. Quite, I'm enjoying that. Um, I'm also just noticed that these, these bits here have been separated because Currently, it's not like that. And also, this bit is a new tab as well. But anyway, moving down the list. Um, population goal. So that'll be how many people are in your park. Um, I'm assuming that it might be a breakdown um, in challenge mode. Maybe a little bit on that if you maybe reach this goal, maybe they'll give you a cash incentive or something like that. And then you've got a park appeal and facilities. Um, your staff rating as well how many employees that you have, staff efficiency. Uh, one thing I'd love to see in Prehistoric Kingdom, I'm, I'm sure I'm sure they're working on it, is um, training your staff because I have been employing um, one star uh, staff because they're the cheapest, but it doesn't necessarily make them efficient. So I'd love to see uh, staff training come to the game and staff happiness. 
additional guest variations. So one of the things that they didn't have time to add into update 11 was clothing variations. So in update 12, we'll correct this by not including alternative outfit colors, but introducing props to the visitors like hats and phones. Yes, because currently right now they hold up their phone like they're taking a picture, but they don't have a phone, which uh, yeah, it's going to come in the game. And I'm just like happy that you see that animation, regardless if their phone is invisible. So I'm not going to read all this out, but what I'd like to say about tutorials is I have tons of tutorials on my channel. So if you are stuck with Prehistoric Kingdom and it's not been implemented into the game just now, because they're obviously needing to create these tutorials, if you do need help with the game, please let me know in any of my videos. Just send me a comment that says, hey, I'm struggling with this. Can you make a video about it? I will be more than happy to make a video on everything that I know about Prehistoric Kingdom. And it could be the tiniest thing. Uh, so do let me know if there's anything that I've not covered that you do want to know in Prehistoric Kingdom. I will be happy to do that for you. But if you do want to wait for the official tutorial, then here is some AI concepts of exactly how it will work. But if I'm not online, there is also the help section within your game that you could read through and uh, hopefully figure out from there. But again, if it's not there, just drop me a message. What about the tutorial scenario? So the tutorial scenario has been in the game, out of the game, in the game, back in the game, out of the game, removed. It has just been so buggy um, and the team have just decided that they're going to remove it, which is probably a better idea just because of so many functions that have been implemented into the game since the tutorial scenario was built. So yeah, the tutorial scenario will be getting removed from the game again. But I'm sure, as it says here, when the game has left early access, then I'm sure they can implement it back into the game. They're also going to be looking at the prefabs. So this is for people who just want to have that plug in and play experience. So if you're not maybe a builder, if you're more into the management side of Prehistoric Kingdom, which is fantastic because update 11 is definitely for you. Uh, but maybe, yeah, you just don't really like modular buildings, which is totally fine. So you can either go on to the workshop, download some prefabs and put them in your park, but they are actually going to be taking a look at it and doing a bit of an overhaul on it. So the experience for new players isn't overwhelming um, and it gives you like a better opportunity to just build uh, with these prefabs rather than have to worry. So that's a good thing for people who don't like building. And then down here we have some bloomers. Hello friends, it's Editing Gemma here and I have just noticed I said the word bloomers instead of bloopers. Apologies for that, I am an idiot. Sorry of update 11 and uh, those wheelbarrows on the head is something special isn't it the way that their guests are moving that yeah they're just terrifying experiences so i'm glad that they have ironed them out and they're not in your game to terrify you but i can't get over that wheelbarrow on the head that's brilliant so what does this mean for the updates for prehistoric kingdom on the channel well i was super excited to start a challenge map but with the new upcoming improvements which will be in a couple of patches i think i'm gonna have to hold off especially Especially if it's going to balance out the gameplay a little bit better, uh, mainly because I went into bankruptcy. However, I did get an achievement for it. Um, so stick around and uh, watch out for that coming to the channel. Anything that you want to see from Prehistoric Kingdom, please do let me know and I will make those videos for you. So until then, take care.